All right, we are back. This is Math 200. We're looking at the review for chapter five and six. So let's jump in. We've got number one. That is f of x is equal to 12x squared and g of x is equal to negative 14x squared. And they want me to find f minus g of x. So what that means is you're just gonna find f of x minus g of x. So that should be relatively easy. 12x squared minus negative 14x squared. Gotta be careful about that because there's two, there's a negative on there and that's a minus. So minus a negative is a plus. <clears throat> so there we are with 26x squared for our answer. Then they want us to find f minus g of zero. And so we put zero in for x, so that is 26 times zero squared, and that is 26 times zero, which is just zero. So those are the two answers for that one. Let's look at number two. Simplify 15r cubed plus 10r squared s, that's in parentheses, plus, negative 5rs squared minus 9s to the third, is that to the third? Yep. And that's also in parentheses. And then minus, now this is the one we have to kind of focus on, negative 12r squared s plus 6rs squared. I'm kind of out of room there. And so that negative, we're gonna, we're gonna distribute that. So that's gonna be plus 12r squared s and minus 6r s squared. And so that's gonna come into play. So here, we're gonna write them in order. So I'm not gonna, I, I'm gonna drop the parentheses on these and I'm gonna put like terms next to each other. <clears throat> so we have, um, oh, I think that's supposed to be in, I have on the key an X that's supposed to be an R, shoot. I'll make sure to change that. So 15 R cubed, and then plus 10 R squared S, plus 12 R squared S, minus five R S squared, minus six R S squared, minus nine S cubed. Okay, so these are like terms. We can put those together, we can put those together. And that changes the coefficient, but not the exponents. So 15 R cubed uh, plus 22 R squared S, minus 11 R S squared, minus nine S cubed. Now, as long as you have those in any order, Order doesn't matter which way you write it. I wrote it in descending order according to R. So I went R3, R2, R, and then no R at all, just the 9S squared. All right. Okay, let's keep going. So now we do number three is g of x is equal to negative 3x squared minus x plus 12. And they want me to find g of two. So all you're gonna do is put a two everywhere where you see an x, and then you're gonna follow order of operations. So exponents first, so negative three times four minus two plus 12, negative 12 minus two plus 12, and then the negative 12 and the positive 12 wipe each other out, so just negative 2. All right, uh, determine what it is. 7a cubed b cubed plus 4b to the fifth z. That is, there's two terms, so it's a binomial. If there's one term, it's a monomial. Two terms, it's a binomial. Three terms, it's a trinomial. Otherwise, you write other polynomial. All right, simplify number five. That is three to the x power times three to the x plus seven power. So when you have like bases and they're being multiplied, 
you add the exponents. Uh, an easier version of this, like when you had x to the seventh times x to the second, that was x to the ninth, because you just said seven of them and two of them, that's nine of them total. Here, it's a little more abstract because you've got variables in there, but at the end of the day, it's one x plus one x. So three to the power two x plus seven. All right. Let's continue on to page two of the review. So we have 10 to the fourth power over 10 to the 12th power. This is a little tricky because they, they're kind of, it's a little confusing because you see the 4 and the 12 and you want to go, oh, reduce the fraction so it's one third. But don't because that's not how we do this. This is like bases, so we cancel those. There's like four tens on the top and 12 tens on the bottom. They cancel one for one, so there's eight left on the bottom. So this is like one over 10 to the 12 minus four, which is one over 10 to the eighth power. And they don't want you to actually put down the really tiny decimal. It says um, enter your answer with a positive exponent. So they wanted an exponential form with an exponent, okay? Um, you could have done it this way too. If you look at how the book is gonna explain it, it's gonna go like this. Like base is being divided, so we subtract, and then they're gonna have 10 to the negative eight. And then remember, negative exponents just changes the position in the fraction. So it goes from the numerator to the denominator, and like the price of shipping is the negative power, kind of. All right, cool. Number seven, we got 2PQ squared, quantity squared, times 7P to the fifth Q, quantity cubed. Now, the tricky part here is remembering that the numbers and the variables without an exponent on it actually have ones. So I put a one there, a one there, a one there, and a one there. And when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply. So we have two squared p squared q to the fourth times seven cubed. That's gonna be pretty big. p to the 15th q to the third. So usually everybody nails the 15th power and the fourth power, but a lot of people forget that you have to, every one of those powers has to be multiplied by three. Because remember, this means it translates, it's shorthand for this. That's what cubed means. So that same base times itself three times. So we have seven times seven times seven. We have five, 10, 15 of them. We have uh, one, two, three, Q to the third, okay? So now we do the four and we do the um, seven to the third. So that ends up being 1,372. And we tally up the P's, that's P to the 17th. And we tally up the Q's, that's uh, four and three more. So seven of them, all right. Lovely doubling. Let's do the next one is a little harder still because we've got a negative coefficient. And so now we have to be careful with those negatives. So when they throw a negative 10 x squared y four to the third power at us, it's like this negative 10 in parentheses to the first x squared y four. I'll raise to the third. And so now we have negative 10 to the third power, x to the sixth, y to the twelfth. So negative times a negative times a negative is a negative 1,000 x six y twelve. So had that been an even, if that would have been to the fourth power instead of the third power, then this would be 10,000, but it would be positive instead of negative. All right. Oh, number nine's quick, right? A to the negative nine, that's just one over a to the ninth power. A negative exponent means you don't change the sign, you change the position in the fraction. So if it's in the numerator, it gets shipped to the denominator, and then you make it positive. Like the price of shipping is the, the negative sign, okay? Uh, let's see. 
Number 10, we got 6.5 times 10 to the negative 10 times 4 times 10 to the 9th. So these are in um, scientific notation right now. You could just take them out of scientific notation and type that into your calculator and multiply it out. That's fine. I don't think that's what they really wanted you to do. I think what they wanted you to do is take and kind of rearrange it so it's a little easier. You're probably still going to use your calculator. So these are like bases. So I can add those exponents. So negative 10 plus 9 and 6.5 times 4 is 26. And so then we got 26 times 10 to the negative 1. Well, that, remember, moves it down. So we end up with 26 over 10 to the 1st, which is just 2.6. So that's how we ended up with that. Now, if you didn't want to do it that way, um, you could have put in 0 .0000000 with nine zeros and a 6.5, and then times 4, and then add nine zeros, and then hit Enter, and it'll kick out 2.6. Be careful you keep track of the zeros off. You're going to use technology like that, all right? 11 is convert 3.158 times 10 to the negative fifth to just a standard decimal form. And so what that negative power means is we take this decimal and we move it five places. That doesn't mean add five zeros in this case. It's one and then two, three, four, five. So we're going to actually add two, three, four zeros, right? One, two, three, four zeros, and then a three. And don't forget the one, five, eight. Lots of students are so focused about this decimal being shipped from there to there, five places, that they forget about the rest of the number. Don't forget about the rest of the number. All right, a very common error. Okay, so now we're kind of shifting into the... Um, multiplying, multiplying binomials times binomials and stuff like that. So let's jump in. We got m minus 2 times m squared plus 10 m minus 3. And so we're going to do the distributive property one, two, three times. So that's m cubed plus 10m squared, because m times m squared is m cubed. m times 10m is 10m squared. m times negative 3 is negative 3m. Then we're going to take this negative 2, and we're going to multiply that by each term. So plus 2m squared. Oh, wait, not plus, though, minus. Right? A negative times a positive is a negative. Make sure you mind your signs. Uh, negative times a positive is a negative again, 20m. And a negative times a negative, there's our positive, 6. And now we combine up like terms. So again, we could rearrange them. So we have m squared, 2m squared, minus 3m, minus 20m, 6. We put those together, we put those together. We get m cubed plus 8m squared minus 23m plus 6. And that's our answer. All right, a third degree polynomial with four terms. Uh, let's look at 13. We got 7m minus 1 times m plus 9. Now, um, I know this might sound silly when I say this, but make sure not to refactor it. I've had students do that. The second part of this test, chapter 6, is all about factoring. This part is still chapter 5. So we're not factoring right now. We're taking 7m times both of those. So 7m squared plus 63m. And then negative 1 times both of those. So negative 1m minus 9. And then we're combining like terms. And then that's it. We're done. We did it. Okay. I've had students get to this point, and then they look at that and go, oh, I know how to take that apart. I'll take six, seven times negative nine, and I'll make a list of suspects, and I'll factor it by grouping, you know, do the AC method. Ooh, don't do that. Don't do that. We'll, we will be factoring, but this isn't a factoring problem. So really pay attention. When they say multiply, 
you end up with this trino mill and that's where you're done. Don't don't go back and and um, try to take it back apart. When you do take it back apart, it'll end up right back to where you started. But it, it'll take you a lot of time and I want you to not miss out on that. Okay, so now we are looking at uh, number 14, where we're multiplying negative 1 7th s to the 4th times 5 8 r to the 10th s to the 3rd. It's our favorite thing, fractions, right? The F word. So let's rearrange it. Negative 1 7th times 5 8 and then times s to the 4th times s to the 3rd times r to the tenth. So I just rearranged it. All I did was I put the, the fractions right next to each other, and then the s's right next to each other, and then there was an r. I just tacked it out at the end. All right, so now remember how we multiply fractions. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and then see if you can reduce. So negative 5 over 56, so we can't reduce that. So that just stays there. And then s7. Sorry, my S is, I try to put the little lines on it so you know it's not a 5, but then it kind of looks like the 17th power. So I've been taking it off at the top. And then times R to the 10th. So there we are. And then 15 is a combination of 13 and 14. It is distributive property twice, or FOIL, if you are more comfortable calling it FOIL, that's fine. But it's first outer, inner, last, or just like the distributive property twice. So 3y times 3y is 9y squared. 3y times 2 fifths x, remember that's over 1, so that is 6 plus, 3 times 2 is 6, 1 times 5 is 5, 6 fifths, and we'll just call it xy. Then it is again, top times top, bottom times bottom, right, negative, six fifths x y and then numerator times numerator negative four denominator times denominator 25 x times x x squared and now since these were conjugates remember conjugates one minus and one plus this middle terms positive six fifths x y negative six fifths x y those actually cancel when you add them together and we end up with a difference of squares with fractions. All right. Okay, let's look and see what we are for time. 17. Yeah. Here, we'll do uh, number 16 and 17. Be about halfway through. So we have um, f times g of x, and then they want me to find f times g of negative 1. So x squared plus 2x plus 2 times negative 7x plus 12. So we're going to rearrange that. Let's write this first and this second. And so, make sure I wrote it down right. Okay, now the distributive property twice. So negative seven X to the third minus 14 X squared minus 14 X plus 12 X squared plus 24 X and plus 24. And now combine up the like terms. So we got negative 7x to the third all by itself, but this matches with that. So negative 2x squared. This matches with that. So plus 10x, and that's a standalone. So there is the first answer. That is f times g of x, all right? Now, the second part of this we're gonna put negative one in everywhere where we see it. They want f times g, which we just 
figured out of negative 1. So negative 7 times negative 1 cubed minus 2 times negative 1 squared plus 10 times negative 1 plus 24. And now again, you got to be careful because a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. That's negative 1 times negative 7. This is negative 2 times positive 1 because a negative 1 times a negative 1 is a positive 1 plus negative 10 plus 24. So we have positive 7 minus 2 minus 10 plus 24. And so now we can just go across, we can move the negatives and the positives and have a grand royal. I'm just going to go 5 and then 5 and um, right 7 and negative 2 is positive 5 and then negative 10 is negative 5. And negative 5 plus 24 is 19. All right. Okay, we'll pick up on the, I'll make a second video with the rest of the review.